but I think it applies to adults as well. We often forget that we are just big people trying to navigate the world as well. If somebody mistreats us at work or at home, we are allowed to have feelings. We are allowed to not like certain things or certain people. We are allowed to lose our shit sometimes. Unpopular opinion, adults are just kids but bigger in size. No, really, I feel like that's the case because people play bets, people play games, but the only difference is that games become an adult's thing when there's money involved. But on a serious note, based on my observations since I joined the adult world in the past six months, I think that there are wants and needs that we all want as adults, but we are too embarrassed to admit that we want those things because it doesn't seem cool, it doesn't seem grown up for us to admit those things for ourselves. So I recently read this book called Tell Me What You Want and it really made me question and answer myself a lot. The author is a therapist and she dedicates each chapter to a desire that we all have as humans. For example, power, freedom, creativity, uh, attention. And I found myself taking notes, a lot of notes in my journal as I read the book. It's really interesting to reflect on a lot of things on myself and the book also gave me the courage that I needed to admit certain things for myself. So for example, very simple example, a few years I would say I don't like to receive flowers um, and I would tell people that I think it's expensive and I didn't like the idea of cutting flowers to give to someone. But then the first time that I received flowers, I felt really good. Since then, you know, if somebody didn't give me flowers on an important day, I would get a little bit sad. I mean, I did bring it on myself because the person, you know, intentionally didn't give me flowers because I told them not to. But I think, you know, deep down, I wanted flowers. So in my journal, I wrote down the things that I resonated with. The first thing in this chapter on attention, one of the things the author said was, People who aren't getting enough attention often struggle to pay attention. And paying attention can diminish the need for attention when we find a way to get full focus to a conversation, a book, or a project. The need for others to pay attention to us can recede and feel less desperate. I feel like it clicked with something in my head because I think that sometimes when we are so bored um, and we want attention from the people around us, if we don't get that attention, we that plays out in so many other aspects of our life. For example, dating the wrong person or hanging out with the wrong group of friends, just because that seems exciting and that makes us feel like, oh, this person or these people are giving us the attention that we need. So deep down, we would still feel isolated because we're not getting the attention that we actually need from our family or our close friends. What the author is saying is that by making yourself busy, by doing the things that you love um, and focusing on the things that you enjoy doing, you might be able to help yourself and give yourself that kind of attention that you want from other people. And the thing is, when I really you know, look back on myself, I do feel like when I'm busy traveling or when I'm busy you know, doing the things that I like, like editing or other things, I feel less need to post or check social media or to engage with people on my social media accounts. And the next quote that she wrote was, when someone we care about pays attention to something that matters to us, we feel closer and we feel thought about. You know, sometimes when I create something or edit or produce a video and I show it to the people around me, I didn't focus that much on whether those things were reaching more people, but I felt weird when my family or close friends didn't clearly support it by you know pressing a like button or commenting on those things um, and at first i felt bad about it because i thought oh they probably don't care about me 
But this quote actually made me realize that no, it's not that they don't care about me. It's probably just that they have so many other things going on in their lives that they forgot to pay attention to what I'm doing. So that brings us to the next thing that the other mentioned in the book. Make a point of concentrating on an activity or topic that matters to someone you love and attention is a form of love and understanding. These sentences articulate my thoughts very well and I thought to myself two things. One, I will pay attention to the things that matter to the people around me and two, I will ask my family, friends and loved ones to pay attention to the things that matter to me when they forget to because I think that sometimes we just have to vocalize what is it that we want or need from the people around us. And the next thing is in the creativity chapter, the author said that creativity is something that is often encouraged in kids but once we're past childhood and once we enter adulthood, it seems like it's not encouraged anymore because now society encourages us to obey the rules and follow the societal norms and have standards but it doesn't mean creativity is dead it just means that our imagination is being put to the wrong use so for example instead of creating an artwork or or something we imagine and make up all these kind of scenarios in our head this person doesn't like me would people think i'm stupid these videos i'm making are not helpful, would people think I'm trying too hard? That hits me hard because for me, I do feel like it would be more productive for me if I stop overthinking and making up all these scenarios that may not be true. You know, instead of doing that, I could really use my time and energy and brain power on creating quality things you know speaking of productivity another thing is we tend to use productivity to fill up for the time where we crave to express our creativity and so you know like we just keep giving and giving and working and exhausting ourselves to the point that we feel burnout and we do not have the inspiration or motivation to do anything else that's why creativity is so important in that sense it helps you to keep reinventing yourself. We all need playtime, but we are denying ourselves of that playtime that we desperately need. Even when I have my own playtime, I feel guilty um, because I'm not doing something productive. Or I ask myself if this playtime is going to help me relieve my stress or if it's going to give me some sort of inspiration to do something new. Or even when I'm reading a book. Like I I can't just read a book simply just to read a book. Like I, I keep asking myself, is this book going to teach me something new? And what could that be? Productivity doesn't necessarily mean creativity, but the line is so blurry sometimes. The author said that we can try to be willing to experiment something new in our daily lives, even if it's something small like changing how we wear or how we prepare a meal. I feel like sometimes I forgot that I have hobbies as well because when I engage in a hobby that I used to really enjoy, like drawing for example, I would tell myself, oh, this drawing is not good enough. And in that moment, I'm holding myself to society standard of what a drawing should look like. And I think when I do that to myself, when I tell myself like this is not good enough, that means I'm focusing on productivity instead of focusing on my creativity. You know, like I'm trying to be productive by producing what would be acceptable um, by society. Honestly, sometimes I'm just so tired of my own brain that I wish there's a turn on off button. So if you have any tips on how to be fully in the present, please let me know because I desperately need that. And at the end of the day, we all need love, care, connection, playtime, everything that we needed when we were kids. It's just that we are better at concealing and hiding those needs and those desires. We all struggle in silence because we're afraid of being a burden to other people. We're afraid of 
embarrassing ourselves because you know shouldn't we be strong enough to deal with these things shouldn't we have everything figured out because we grew up physically already and i saw this post on instagram today but i think it applies to adults as well we often forget that we are just big people trying to navigate the world as well if somebody mistreats us at work or at home we are allowed to have feelings we are allowed to not like certain things or certain people we are allowed to lose our shit sometimes we don't have to be professional if somebody throws us under the bus because that is not a very nice or professional thing to do either we don't have to give evil in-laws gifts on a the holidays if they're not giving you anything. I think we need to stop expecting ourselves or other adults to be able to handle all of our emotions. One of the ways that I do that is by asking myself, would my dad, who passed away last year, want me to tolerate or endure this kind of treatment? I'm starting to learn to be more gentle with myself, but also with the other adults around me. Um, doesn't matter how old they are, because at the core, we're just kids, but bigger in size. Oh, and just a, an update. I think my acne got better since the last video I posted. So, yeah. <laughs>